Hello, and uh, I'd like to welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today to hear about SNX. I have two quick housekeeping issues before I get started. First, I'd like to remind everyone that today's webinar is being recorded, so it can be viewed later by those who are not able to join us or if you want to look back at anything. Um, we'll also provide the PowerPoint, definitely a lot of information, so you'll be able to review that as well. Second, you should see a Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Given the size of the audience today, uh, this will be the best way to share questions. So when we're done with the presentation, go through the questions and Brandon and I will um, answer them. And then to get started, we are excited to get back into SNX. This is the second time that we posted this event, very valuable industry gathering. And um, as you probably know, our trade show Snacksbo is now an every other year event. And with SNX being held in the even number of years, SNX is a little different, but no less important in terms of creating business opportunities in the industry. Finally, before we get started, I want to introduce my colleague, uh, Brandon, who will be hosting the webinar and leading the presentation. Many of you know Brandon Partridge. Um, he's a consultant with Snack and works very closely with us on SNX, as well as Snacksbo, Elf, and other signature events. So now I will hand it over to Brandon and uh, come back on for some questions. Thanks so much, Abby. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my screen up. Uh, pardon me. There we go. Okay. Um, great. I'm glad to have you here to talk with us today and for us to field your questions. Um, I, this, as you'll see from the title slide here, we call I call this All About SNX 2.0. Uh, some of you may have been with us. We did a, a webinar in October um, that sort of, well, I'll cover some similar information today, but also be able to expand and offer some new detail, additional detail about things that we have planned um, and sort of developments that have occurred since the last time we met. But if this is the first SNX webinar you're attending, I'm also going to be hitting all the high points. Um, so no need to be worried. We will not be uh, blazing ahead and leaving you behind. You'll you'll get all the relevant information. Um, as uh, Abby said, we'll answer questions at the end, and we'll also, um, after anyone registered for this webinar, we'll be able to receive a recording uh, probably tomorrow or within a couple of days, and we'll also include a PDF of these slides. So this will be available, and if it's helpful for sort of engaging colleagues or peers who weren't able to attend the webinar today, you'll be able to share those internally um, and uh, and pass along the information that way. So I'll go ahead and get started, and um, let's dive in. So I wanted to start with this uh, beautiful image of the Dallas skyline. Uh, the principal building here in frame is the Hyatt Regency Dallas. Um, for those of you who attended um, SNX in 2022, you may recall we were at a resort property in Arizona. Uh, it was very nice, but sort of we learned, had some learnings about what works well for this event. We felt like there was something we could level up and sort of identify a property that suited us a little bit better. And we're really excited about the Hyatt Regency Dallas. Dallas, like Phoenix, is a very accessible um, destination in terms of air travel. So we wanted it to be an easily accessible point for people. And we think that will be the case here. Um, I often point out that one of the reasons I actually was brought in as a consultant to work with the team on SNX was that I previously was an executive at another food industry trade group that had a similar style meeting. Um, and, and in fact, in one year, uh, shortly after I left, so I haven't been to this property myself, but they actually hosted it at the Hyatt Regency Dallas. So it's sort of been stress tested um, for an event like this one. And we're uh, excited to, to sort of make this our location for 2024. There we go. Um, so top line, what is SNX? Um, Snack Industries Premier Education and Collaboration Forum. Um, I'll talk about you know all of the things that that covers over the course of these slides, but I do think probably the thing that SNX is most known for are the, the private meetings that occur. And I would say that's probably sort of the signature feature, but by no means there is a ton of value that transpires in a number of different forms. Um, and I'll sort of go through all of that. Um, but we consider this along with Snacksbo to be, you know, the signature gathering of the snack food industry. And so we're bringing a lot to the table um, in order to make it a valuable gathering for you and teams from your companies. As Abby explained, it occurs every other year alternating with Snacksbo. I'm sure many of you 
have a very long, excuse me, have a very long history with Snacksbo. And I think within, you know, a handful of years ago, sort of the industry and the snack leadership acknowledged that maybe an annual Snacksbo had run its course. And maybe there was some other way the industry could come together to accomplish business and to sort of address commercial objectives. Um, and through a deliberative process, SNX was the sort of out, outcome uh, or the output of that process. Uh, our first was in 22. Our second will be next spring. And we're very excited about it. It is, uh, is I call it, I, one way I describe it is hotel-based meetings instead of convention-based exhibits. Um, it's a much lighter lift. There's, you know, less moving parts and equipment and booths and all these things that you're shipping around the country um, and a little bit more about people and human contact. Um, obviously, because this is only our second one, we don't have like a great um, sort of uh, crystal ball, if you will, about where we're going to end up with attendees. But we certainly are aspiring for several hundred attendees and, and up to 90 suppliers. You know, one thing I want to make note, and this is certainly new information since the uh, webinar we did in October, is as we sit here in the first week of December, we're more than five months away from SNX24, and we have already surpassed the, the supplier participation um, for SNX22. And I don't mean as of five months in advance, I mean as of the actual event. So we are trending very favorably in terms of really gathering uh, the meat of our industry together to do some really important business in Dallas. So all the more reason that I encourage those of you who have not yet made the commitment to look at it very closely and to work with us to find a way for you to engage. And then finally, my one sort of like one line phrase I like to use to describe SNX is it's more trade, less show, really about doing business, but doesn't require all the bells and whistles of a trade show. Hopefully it's something that you're relieved to be able to come and sort of be able to anticipate or participate in a more personal way. Um, like I said, uh, you know, the B2B meetings are sort of the centerpiece of SNX, but there's a lot of moving parts. Um, education is a major piece of this. We have keynote speakers. We have a concurrent education sessions. We have the snack tank pitch competition. I'll go into more detail about all those things later in the slides. Uh, but that's absolutely a, 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 a sort of a real important plank of the, of the platform, if you will, um, for SNX. Um, the supplier suites, this is a really an important piece as it relates to your participation. Um, it is the home of the meetings that will, will be held and, and sort of selecting a suite and reserving a suite is really like the entry point for the supplier participation in SNX. Um, and then the meetings themselves, I'll talk about the, 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 the number and the length and the, and the how and the what of the meetings a little bit later, but these are arranged pre-scheduled mostly through a central scheduling platform. Um, and so, you know, I we had a webinar uh, just like this one yesterday with the snack manufacturer and brand community to talk about why they need to be there, uh, which is obviously a critical consideration for your decision to participate. Um, and we really hammered in that people need to get registered specifically so they can populate into this central scheduling platform. Because in the new year, when we open that up, and I'll uh, talk more about the schedule for that uh, later, but when in the new year, when we open that up, you want to go in and really see a, a sort of a, a, a sort of a rich group there for you to engage with and identify, you know, who to invite to meet while you're at SNX. Um, so that's clearly an important part. And then finally, the experience zone. You know, one of the things we've tried to do with the design of SNX is sort of dispense with some of the hard parts about a trade show, but preserve some of the, what I call the, like the serendipitous encounters. Uh, you know, the thing about a trade show, it's a large volume of people. And so you have the ability to just kind of cross paths um, in, an, in a way that maybe you didn't arrange in advance, or you didn't even know about in advance, but you still kind of bump into people in a beneficial way. The experience zone is really our attempt to rep replicate that experience at SNX. It's sort of an analog to a trade show floor, but it's uh, much less space um, suppliers can reserve a collaboration kiosk, which is sort of a branded presence, but not a huge footprint uh, within that space. And uh, that is a way that, that that snack brands and manufacturers and producers can move through the experience zone and encounter you there in that more sort of unstructured form, if you will. Um, there are several engagement areas, um, which is sort of a more in, an opportunity to have a more of an interactive experience. We have a couple of those already planned, but we're also anxious to talk with the supplier community about ways that you might want to make a, an impact um, through an engagement area. Um, and then finally, we offer um, the Snack Bites education, which is another opportunity for people in the supplier community to sort of raise their profile and have additional visibility at SNX. 
Um, I'll talk about that in greater detail later as well. So moving into the program, um, you know, if you've been to Snackspo before, it, it lays out over the calendar in a very similar way. Sunday is sort of arrival and set up and kickoff. Um, we will have our keynote address on Monday, late on Monday or Sunday, rather, I'm sorry. Uh, and then an opening party on Sunday night. And then we hit the ground running on Monday morning with education and experience zone time. And then we end the day, sort of back half of the day with the first round of supplier suite meetings. One of the reasons for sort of um, doing it in that order is that it, it will be common uh, for some people to come to the event with a few open slots on their calendar. I, I, I advise people to have mostly a booked calendar, but certainly uh, very appropriate to leave a little wiggle room so that you have the opportunity to create chances to meet with people who you just encounter there on site. And so opening with that experience zone time really creates that opportunity. Uh, moving into Tuesday, we then open up with another extensive sort of stretch of supplier suite meetings. Those meetings generally occur, I think it's up to people how they want to schedule them. But I think what we've observed and in my experience with events like this, sort of a cultural norm of having those be sort of meetings in 30 minute increments um, is the most useful from the standpoint of allowing you to really get into business, but then also creating an, leaving enough time that you get the volume of meetings that you want to accomplish as well. And then we close out with a little bit more experience zone time on Tuesday before going to the education arena for our snack tank pitch competition, which is really a great event uh, to close out and, and sort of leaves people on a high note. And then we have the closing party on Tuesday. So diving deeper into the details here, the benefits of SNX, I've referred to, referred to a few of these already, but really it's about one-on-one -on -one connections. You know, the trade show is about encountering a large volume of people and then hoping from among that large group, a handful of important business um, sort of uh, contacts or, or customers or partners can, can, can emerge. Here, this is really about a smaller uh, uh, encountering a smaller population, but in a higher quality way, if you will. Um, and so I think that's one of the real benefits here and a nice way that like doing it, having SNX in sort of rotation with Snacksbo kind of gives us the best of both. Um, it's a lighter footprint, easier to engage. Like I said before, if you're from the supplier community, you're not necessarily shipping around giant pieces of equipment and, you know, 20 by 20 booths and all of the the wares that go along with putting that on, this really allows you to focus on your customers and your team. Uh, and it's really about the people. Um, private meetings, you get that quality one-on-one -on -one contact, but with the organic interaction of a larger event through the experience zone. And we think of this as sort of getting outside the booth to interacting with prospects in new ways. One, one thing that I really want to emphasize and, and encourage you to think about as you kind of process the cost benefit analysis of an event like this is what the efficiency of a gathering like SNX allows you to accomplish with respect to your investment in travel and just the, the general cost to be there. Um, you know, people, depending on how you schedule your time, can easily have up to 10, 10 business meetings, up to 20 plus if you sort of, I'd say, book aggressively. In some cases, suppliers will get more than one suite to increase the volume of meetings they can have. So uh, just when you compare that to uh, what it would cost to replicate that amount of one-on-one -on -one contact with customers, uh, you know, by going on the road, you just quickly see the math is strongly in favor of a gathering like SNX. I was just myself on a trip to the West Coast late last week. And, you know, just it's, a, you know, the inflation in the tra in, in travel budgets is, is really apparent. And I think SNX, while it is, you know, an invitation to once again travel and spend a few nights at a hotel, we believe the amount of business that you can accomplish there more than compensates for, for the investment required to participate. So I think of this as having a, a really um, significant contribution to the commercial objectives of the industry. Critical question, obviously, if you're a supplier, who will be there? And as I always say, if you see them at Snacksbo, you will see them at SNX. Um, we have obtained commitments from all the members of the, the Snack International Board, as well as other key members that they are going to be sending delegations of people. I encourage them always, as I did yesterday, to think about functional diversity as they uh, 
you know, um, assemble people to come, you know, if they want, they need product and R&D people to engage around, you know, flavors and seasonings, ingredients, they need operations people to look and talk, look at and talk about equipment and sort of more CapEx oriented investments. And we want the right mix of people to be there so that all of the supplier community has the right person to talk to. Um, it's unsatisfying sometimes when, you know, if you are, you have a very technical offering and the general counsel shows up to your meeting, you not, may not really be talking to the right person. You know, we we do our best to push the companies to bring the right mix of people so they can have all the necessary conversations that are available to be had at SNX. So again, total snack value chain, brands, manufacturers, coast packers, service providers, and of course, just the social experience of gathering with friends and colleagues who we're fortunate to see a few times across the year, often at snack international events. So getting into the supplier suites, um, if you were at SNX in 2022, this will be very familiar to you. Um, in short, you know, these are hotel meeting rooms or hotel rooms themselves that are converted for business meeting purposes where you can host these meetings. They come in a range of sizes and, and rates. Um, there is the presidential suite, and the sky suite. I've got images on the next slide of the other varieties as well. These are the very high end. I've got the price points at the end of the slides. We'll, we'll, we'll look at those. So a, a lot of range in terms of the scale and the and the caliber of what you can do in terms of where you choose to host people for your meetings. In addition to the presidential suite and the sky suite, the sunset suite is still a suite style setup, but a little bit more modest in terms of its footprint. And then the standard suite is actually just a conventional hotel room that has the hotel furniture pulled out of it and then is set up as you can see in a few of these images for sort of a, a, a business meeting style. Um, often a question we get is about particularly, this would not be the case in a standard suite because the hotel um, furniture is pulled out of there. In the other suite style rooms, uh, you know, those obviously come with sleeping quarters. It is not required, but certainly an option if you're thinking about trying to be efficient with cost to have one of your team members sleep in those quarters and then, you know, still be able to conduct your business out in the more public facing parts of the room. You know, if you get down into the level of detail and those types of questions, um, Abby or David or myself are happy to connect with you separately to kind of talk through the options and the way to kind of make your budget uh, go as far as you can make it. So that's kind of the, the top line on the supplier suites. Let's talk about the experience zone, which as you saw from the schedule is another important location where business occurs here. The image on the top left is sort of a schematic drawing of the way the experience zone is set up. And it is designed based on how people flow into and then through the room to kind of replicate the uh, snack value chain. So um, all the various elements there, we sort of arrange suppliers based on where you fit within sort of the, the, the product life cycle, if you will. Um, and this is the picture on the lower right is a picture from 22. The, late, the, you know, the design will be a little bit different in 24, but it certainly gives you the flavor. You can see these kind of upright uh, kind of tabletop counters that have kind of uh, logos and branding on the top, offer the opportunity to have a video display and really just provides a place for your team to gather so that you can encounter people as they move through kind of the aisle, which would be visible behind the people facing us in that bottom right photo. Um, collaboration kiosks, I think are important along with this. I think of the supplier suite and the collaboration kiosk as sort of the, uh, the table stakes of sort of having your presence fully established at SNX. Also the engagement areas, um, we have a couple that we're working on already that I'll describe in a minute, but I want to flag for this group in particular, you know, in 2022, we had one company do a virtual reality style um, area where, you know, um, people coming through could put on like a headset and sort of see inside of a manufacturing facility. I, I encourage you to think broadly, think about other kind of interactive uh, opportunities you've encountered at trade shows or other events that might be of interest to you. Because this is a young event, we're very interested in sort of um, ideating on ways to sort of, um, you know, create additional opportunities for you to kind of provide the kind of experience you want for the people you're trying to connect with at SNX. And then lastly, Snack Bites. This is, I have a photo of this a little later in the slides, but this is on-floor education inside the Experience Zone presented by suppliers. So this, a similar version of this occurs at Snackspo, but this is in an area inside the Experience Zone. It's sort of short, um, kind of thought leadership style educations presented by um, by suppliers and participants at SNX. Um, in the next week or so, week to 10 days, uh, yeah, about a week, I believe, um, we will be coming out to the supplier community with an invitation to submit 
um, your, your sort of proposal or interest in speaking. Um, this is a great opportunity to really get additional, really leverage and demonstrate your expertise and thought leadership, get in front of decision makers and, and procurement people, sort of talk about the, the value um, proposition of your product or service. You know, we work with you to try and, ex and we still want to work with you um, to frame it up as a more educational offering, but clearly in the course of doing so, you are exhibiting sort of your value, uh, which is just another way to kind of create um, visibility, uh, you know, within, within all that's going on at SNX. And going a little bit deeper here on the engagement areas, like I said, think broadly about ways that you would like to sort of make an impact. Um, these are things that you can do on your own or things that we can sort of get a group of, of sort of um, sort of uh, like minded uh, companies together who want to put their foot forward around a particular issue. Um, two examples of this that are, we're already working on. One is we are partnering with a flexible packaging association for a deep dive on pack packaging sustainability. Um, that will involve the opportunity for various packaging suppliers to sort of participate um, and, and engage and, and, you know, put their foot forward with respect to various offerings within their portfolio. Um, and then also, you know, if you've been to Snacksbo, you're familiar with the Flavor Pavilion. Um, we're going to do a Texas-inspired, leaning into our host state of Texas here, to do a Texas-inspired flavor showdown with a winning flavor selected by an attendee vote. So working with our flavor and seasoning uh, companies to really figure out how to, how to put that on in a way that's memorable and fun for the people who engage. But um, those types of, of things where we really shine a spotlight on a particular type of input or a particular company, we're open to speaking with you about how best to do that. So let's talk about education. I said, you know, we talk, we call this the premier education and collaboration forum. Obviously the collaboration piece of that, we really experience mostly through the experience zone and the supplier suites. The education um, is a whole other piece. We're going to open on Sunday afternoon with a keynote address and our we didn't have we didn't have this to share in October, but now can announce um, that Martin Otto, the recently retired chief operating officer at HEB, will be our guest speaker. Um, for those of you either from Texas or obviously if you've been in the food food industry for a while, you certainly know that HEB is a beloved Texas based supermarket chain. I've worked across numerous food categories. They are a respected operator by nearly everyone in sort of CPG that I have known over the years. Martin is a really um, deep thinker and an incredibly thoughtful person um, and has some great messages that he'll share with us both about the food industry and his thoughts about the economy at large. Um, just the kind of thing that is really thought provoking and kind of mind expanding and I think will work function very well as a keynote opening address for us on Sunday. Then on Monday morning, we will have a selection of, of uh, breakout sessions. So you will be making some choices during these. There'll be sort of two windows that you'll be opting into. Um, the topics that we're, we're, we're sort of uh, developing now and sort of develop, uh, uh, recruiting speakers to come in for those, uh, it, you'll see identified here what's new with the American consumer, sustainability, a focus on tech and AI. And then obviously, as we often do at these events, SNAC General Counsel Martin Hahn will be surveying the regulatory landscape with us. The other thing we're offering, and I'd be, we'd love to connect with you offline to share more information about this, it's still in development, is we're going to be offering two legal sessions um, as part of this um, gathering that will be uh, certified for CLE credit. So if you are from the legal function or if you are a lawyer yourself or if from people from your legal department would be interested in learning how to take advantage of that, um, certainly look forward to sharing more information, but certainly want to draw your attention to that. That was not something that occurred in 2022, and that's a new offering this year. Um, so I think that will be, that'll be uh, great. Um, and then lastly, the picture on the bottom there is the picture I referred to previously of the snack bite education sessions. As you can see, that's a picture from 2022. As you can see, you know, this session is occurring within the larger experience zone, but has drawn a nice audience there for the speaker at the podium to kind of talk through um, his, uh, you know, kind of message about whatever the kind of value proposition that he was sharing there. But that functions really well. And <clears throat> we get, I think we worked really hard at last time, and I think it worked out very well where you get sort of the um, the attention of people, but we're obviously still allowing people in the surrounding area to have, you know, the other types of interactions that are going on. Uh, so we're neither kind of alienating those folks or, or sort of separating too much. We're kind of right there amongst all the action, but it's worked very well. And you'll have the opportunity to apply to submit uh, proposals for one of those sessions and encourage you to do so. I think it's a really a, a high quality opportunity. 
The other piece of education in Snack Tank that is, or it's SNX rather, that is super fun is the Snack Tank Pitch Competition. Um, if you've been to Snack International events the last few years, um, this will be the third Snack Tank that we have presented. It is uh, an incredibly fun experience for both the participants and the audience. Um, I, as I said before, I work across numerous food and beverage categories, and I am a part of what I do and also involves kind of liaising with the emerging brand community and the early stage startup community across the food industry. And I would say, you know, no food category is ahead of snacks with respect to the degree of experimentation and entrepreneurship uh, and the sort of the regular launch of new and innovative products. And so I think it's totally appropriate that Snack International kind of creates a place for that to be highlighted and spotlighted at an event like SNX. We have a $10,000 cash prize for the winner, plus sampling opportunities for all the participants. We are always joined by some sort of like special guest or celebrity judge, if you will. And this time we're going to be joined by Damon John, a uh, well-known business, business leader and entrepreneur, as well as um, a member of the ABC Shark Tank. Um, he will be both a speaker and a judge for the competition. We'll have a panel of judges that includes a number of other people across industry, but we're very glad to announce and confirm that we've recently uh, procured Ryland Allen, who's the VP of Snack Merchandising at Walmart, to be president at SNX and also participate in the uh, competition as a judge. So that'll be a great addition, and we'll have more announcements about other uh, members of the judging panel coming soon. But um, this is a, a, just a really... the. A really great experience, both, you know, as I said, for the audience as well. These um, the, the people pitching these brands are so passionate and they're sort of pushing such innovative and sort of uh, new concepts. And really closing the event with this really leaves, I think, people le feel leaving on a high note. Uh, and, you know, so the picture on the bottom left there is uh, one of our uh, candidates pitching, pitching the judges in 2022. And then on the right there, you see the winner holding the oversized check with a group of judges and also a few of the fellow competitors. It's a very, uh, very positive experience, a very encouraging environment that the, the participants really get into it, go, go through it together uh, and leave with a real sense of connection to one another. So um, as I start to come in for a landing here, I've talked a lot about sort of the various pieces uh, and the value associated with participating. I um, want to talk about sort of the investment option. So as you look at this um, sort of image on the on the right side, think about looking at it from the bottom up, right? So sort of the entry point of engagement is the supplier suite. That's effectively required for suppliers to participate. It's sort of table stakes. Um, and 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 I'll get to the, the, I'll revisit again before we're finished, the various types of suites. Um, but once you identify the suite that works for you, then you can layer on additional features. I highly recommend at least a collaboration kiosk, which is sort of would be that supplier suite plus one zone opportunity, but there are other zone opportunities if you are drawn to either a snack bite or an engagement area or some other sorts of some type of visibility, you know, we can certainly work with you to identify the right way to approach that. And then there's just additional levels to level opportunities to level up from there, whether it's a collaboration kiosk plus a sponsorship and a snack bite or an engagement area, you know, you can cobble these things together kind of in any way you want out on top once you sort of have I secured the supplier suite. So um, it's, you know, trying to be very user friendly. Um, and, and obviously the team is, is really open to engaging with you to learn about what your objectives are, what you want to accomplish, um, and finding the right mix of these things to give you the best experience for the, the, the investment involved. So what's our timeline? Registration is open now for both snack brands and manufacturers, your customers, as well as yourselves. Um, SNXevent.com is sort of the home of all the information with the schedule, the information about the various types of suites, the cost and all of that. But we are here to walk you through it and sort of be a concierge through your registration process if you need one. Uh, many of you are probably old pros and can handle this on your own, but just know that if you encounter a question or are uncertain about how to proceed, we're certainly happy to help you with that. Reserve your supplier suites. You'll see on the next slide, I think there are a couple of different suite types that are already sold out. Um, don't be alarmed. There's plenty left of other types. But if you want to be choosy, uh, sooner the better, because uh, they're going fast, as they say. Um, after, after you choose your suite, how, which type, how many, the location, those are all key parts of that when you're making that registration process. Then you can kind of move on to those other pieces of the pyramid that I mentioned on the previous slide. What kind of impact do you want to have in the experience zone, kiosks, engagement, snack bites, et cetera. And then once you've sort of got those pieces in place, the next real um, horizon, thing on the horizon for you will be early in 24 when we open up the scheduling platform. 
Um, that is where you will go in. Anybody who is registered at that point will be populated into the platform and you can begin to initiate requests. We do not, as Snack International, play a role in sort of brokering the meeting request that occurs completely between you and the counterparty. Um, but know that we, a very strong message when I spoke to the snack brands and producers yesterday was to talk about the importance of accepting these meeting requests. Um, it is in the same way that you only go to a trade show because there will be people walking the aisles. You only go to an event like this because people will be accepting your meeting requests. And so know that that message has gone out loud and clear from us that that is a critical part of their engagement and we need them to do that and they will. Um, we will, you'll hear a great deal more from us after the holidays about the scheduling platform. Um, I suspect we may, as we did in 2022, offer an additional webinar with sort of a scheduling platform tutorial. Um, but just know if you used it in 2022, there have been some upgrades. We think this will work even better this year. Obviously, every time you do something for the first time, you learn a little bit. You can find some kinks you can iron out. Um, but again, as with anything else in this process, if you need some handholding and assistance, we're, ha we're here to do that. So next steps, we talked about kind of getting into the thinking about your suite. Um, the, the sort of the table on the left shows the different types of suites and their price points. So obviously, if you want to um, really uh, roll out the red carpet, you can go. The, there's one presidential suite left, but any of these suite types will be suitable for hosting the meetings and accomplishing the business you want to accomplish. So you should sort of work within your means. And again, we are more than willing to engage with you to kind of talk through the options, um, what's included, what's not included, and so on. Um, we have, we have, as I said, we've exceeded our 2022 participation, but as you can see, there's, you know, 40 something or 50 suites available there to choose from across 40 something across the various types. So uh, time to get what you need, but sooner the better, I would say. And, and again, as with any other investment in an event or a marketing initiative, what are your goals? What is your budget? How big is your team? You know, we're here to kind of talk through some of that. And again, you'll be hearing from David about and, and from the snack team about the snack bite opportunity. If you're interested in other sponsorship and opportunities to create additional visibility from yourself, uh, reach out. We're happy to engage you in that conversation. So closing thoughts, and then uh, I'll have a couple of closing testimonial quotes, and then we'll we'll take some questions. But SNX is the snack industry's premier education and collaboration forum. Um, as opposed to like a trade show, we think of it as hotel-based meetings instead of convention-based exhibits. As I said at the beginning, more trade, less show, and a way to think outside the booth. Um, hundreds of the most important snack category executives, you know, in the same way that Snackspo, in my opinion, is sort of a can't miss uh, occasion on the snack industry calendar. I think SNX um, shares that that distinction. They they don't overlap in the same year, so they're it is sort of a, the annual gathering place uh, that I think everyone should be at. Um, and then, as I noted at the open, we have already exceeded our total supplier participation for 2022 with five months to go. So this is ramping up to be an extremely um, successful, effective, and large gathering. And I just think you do not want to miss out on that. So um, talk internally um, about you know what you want to do, what you want to accomplish. You know, we're here in early December. Um, you know, I know for some people at this time of year, there's sort of a budget calendar question about, do I want to do this with 2023 money or do I need to wait to the new year? If you're thinking about things and you do have a time consideration, don't don't wait. If you want to reach out and talk to us, we can work with you. And we understand that some of these sort of timing things, particularly at the end of the year, can be relevant considerations. We can work with you to identify what you need, even if sort of the payment is going to lag slightly just based on, on sort of a budget cycle, if that's the situation for you. And then, as I've said repeatedly, the snack team is here to help. So before we th uh, take it to questions, I, I want to just cite two pieces of feedback we received from participants in SNX from 2022. Here from the supplier, Mike Cantori from Caroline Ingredients. Um, you know, just I'll just read it out to you and then draw your attention to a couple of details. SNX was extremely valued through the supplier suites opportunity. We were able to pre-schedule meetings with top prospects that otherwise we might not have been able to meet with. At a standard trade show, we would have been hoping they'd come by our booth, but at SNX, we were able to get their attention in a private setting for 30 uninterrupted minutes. So that really goes to the, the value that I, I articulated at the top, which is you're not just sort of standing in your booth hoping someone walks by. This is a pre-scheduled, um, you're, not, you're not hoping to see them at the dance, you have a date. Uh, and so I think that's a real value and something that I know Mike and, and the team at Caroline Ingredients uh, experienced in 2022. 
And then lastly, we also heard from Shears Foods, um, who kind of comes at this from the customer end of the equation. And, and Chris Reed really talked about the way walking through the experience zone, which as I described is sort of set up in sort of to replicate the manufacturing process, really helped the team contextualize each individual step, our goals for these processes and what was available to support those goals. From that, we held private meetings to describe our organizational objectives and where those partners present or new fit. And this last piece is so key and I, I just wanna leave you really focusing on this. Shears met with a new company at SNX for the first time. And two years later, we are now engaged in a multi-year agreement and a great partnership. I don't think we would have gotten that right start through an informal meeting on the trade show floor. So I just, I can't think of a, a stronger um, sort of endorsement for what can be accomplished at SNX. I think I think the, the snack producers and the snack brands and manufacturers come at this with uh, a very open mind and an open uh, sort of uh, perspective about who they can meet with, who they can see, who they can engage with. Um, I encourage suppliers to be ambitious in terms of your meeting request and reaching out to the companies you want to meet with. Take advantage of this opportunity where you can get them as a captive audience and create the type of relationship that Chris describes here. So with that, uh, that's uh, a lot of talking by me, but I'll pause here. I'll invite Abby to come back on. And uh, I see we have a few questions that have come into the Q&A and feel free to enter any more. Um, but as I say, the team is here. Uh, you're free to follow up with us after the fact. And um, we will um, also share the recording in these slides um, afterwards for you to distribute internally. So I'll exit out of my slides and, and uh, invite Abby to come back on and we'll address these questions. Thank you, Brandon. Um, definitely a, a packed few minutes with some great information. And uh, we've got a few questions um, we want to cover. So we can just go back and forth and taking them um, and pepper in where I forget. But the first one uh, is asking essentially what a supplier would bring. Uh, do you bring any samples, displays, or whatnot for the kiosks and suites? Um, what about a monitor? So to start with the suites, um, Banners, samples, marketing materials, branding, whatnot, um, anything you can fit into the suite, uh, but more so on that marketing and branding. And um, you'll definitely sh save on traditional trade show shipping and drayage uh, versus what you'll bring at SNX. So also in the suite, there is um, a monitor, like a the TV that's traditionally in a suite. You can make that a monitor. There's a quick, I think it's Chromecast, you just shoot it up to the TV and it, you can project your monitor. Um, so that's already built in. And then the kiosk is essentially anything you can fit on the counter itself. So it's uh, four by two and a half or so uh, wide counter. Um, so more so, again, that marketing and branding materials, samples. Um, and then you can upgrade and bring a monitor and get a monitor, um, or you can bring your own monitor. So you can have that feature as well if you want to run PowerPoints and whatnot. Um, so again, the theme is more so based on the conversation, you can bring um, some of those marketing branding materials, but less about if you're a machinery company, you might want to put something on the monitor versus you're not going to have to spend uh, shipping the actual equipment, save that for Snacks Bow and uh, have a, a good conversation about equipment. Very good, Abby. I'll take the next question. Um, one question that came in was, will SNAC have an incentive program covering travel registration for new SNAC producers? If so, how can we get the information to prospects? Great question. Yet the answer is yes. And now I'm chiding myself for not having addressed this in the presentation, but um, great. That's why we have Q&A. Um, Yes, uh, as if you're if you're familiar, we've offered this uh, at Snacksbo and, and similar events in the past. Um, I don't want to. I, I would I would be reluctant to be quoted directly on this, but my belief, and maybe Abby, you can back me up if I'm if I'm somewhere in the ballpark, uh, is that we offer about a fifty percent reduction of the registration rate, and then we also offer um, a supplement or a, a subsidy for travel costs, both with respect to airfare and hotel stays. So. Um, it, so yes, and we'll be going more public with that, um, you know, particularly as we sort of are uh, recruiting sort of more from the snack brands and producer community. And as we go out to the early stage companies around Snack Tank and elsewhere, um, the the incentive will be a, a something we'll really be promoting. But you've uh, the person, the submitter of this question has raised a good point, which is we'll get that into your hands as well. So that as you are working with companies who might be a fit for that opportunity, you know, you can make sure you share that with them. We appreciate that very much and certainly want to draw in as many of those uh, companies as we can. 
Yes, um, you got it right. It is uh, 50% off registration, a $500 travel incentive. So uh, that'll go towards hotel and flight. And I actually can't stress this one enough. Um, we offer this every year. Uh, we typically max out, but um, it is there. And uh, the, the stress more so comes from get them in early so that they're a part of it. So if you have that customer that you know um, might need that extra uh that extra benefit in coming, uh, the money might not be there. We're here to get them in. We want them there, especially if it's um, someone you really want there, then we're here to help. So send that in um, early and I'm, you know, as soon as we send it out, um, probably before the holiday or just after, uh, get it in. We'll, but, you know, sometime by the beginning of the year is probably that deadline to keep in the back of your head. Um, so good question. Uh, where are we on to the next one? Um, okay, I'll do, we want to hold more meetings. Are we able to reserve multiple suites? Yes. Another great question. Um, so as Brandon said, time-wise, there are eight hours worth of supplier suite meeting hours. So that's eight hours translates to 16, um, meetings. And there are a number of suppliers that, might need more than one suite. So they'll get a second suite, they need more than 16 meetings, or sometimes it's beneficial. Um, if you know you're kind of gonna fill up that block, it'll give you a couple breaks and you can have two meetings at once. Um, if there's, you know, if you bring a, a larger team and maybe one team talks about one thing, one talks about the other, uh, that's an option as well. So um, there are also a handful, um, oh, this, this, what it is, a handful of people that, um, I don't think we've, I don't think we had brought this up, but if you get an upgraded suite, then as Brandon said, um, it comes with the sleeping quarters, the, the bedroom and whatnot, you, again, you're able to use that as a sleeping room, but if not, you can also flip that into a standard suite. So that's, if you get the upgraded suite just for an upcharge, we'll also flip it, make it a whole meeting room, and that can actually be a second one. So that's an option as well. That is a great option. Um, one question is, this is funny, because as I said, we did a similar uh, presentation like this yesterday for the producers. Uh, and the question here is, can producers request meetings with us suppliers or are we responsible for sending all requests out? Uh, I'll just let you know that that question was asked yesterday as well. So they are already thinking about their ability to request meetings. And the answer to that is yes. The the the, the the, the platform is is wide open and people can request any direction they want. So it is not only on the, the suppliers to initiate. Um, anyone can reach out and request that. So and we and we fully expect it to that to occur. So um, all of that you will have regardless of your role, you're likely to have both incoming and outgoing meeting requests. And so, you know, one thing I didn't talk about and actually I'll just maybe insert a note here that I meant to say when when talking about the meeting process is. I encourage you to think about appointing what we call, like when we talk about this, we call it a quarterback. Um, sometimes the quarterback might be somebody's executive assistant. Sometimes it might be a person who will actually be on site at SNX. But, you know, particularly if you're bringing several people and you're going to have these incoming and outgoing meeting requests, you know, some meeting, if there, if you have five people there, one meeting request might be for two people, but you might be making an outgoing request to somewhere else. And it's important to have one person who's kind of designated to keep an eye on all the moving parts of the schedule, just so that you don't overcommit people. Um, it's a, just sort of a practice that I think we learned going through this last time that particularly if you're bringing a larger team, you know, this is even more so if you're a company that has multiple suites, because that's just a, like a three dimensional chess of people coming and going around all the various meetings that can occur at once. So um, think about that. And but yes, by all means, the, the, the meeting request will be both coming in and going out uh, from the producers and the suppliers. Yeah, that's a good point. And also um, at the beginning of the year. I want to say it's around the end of January, early February. Um, we'll do another webinar kind of leading into the show that's really best practices, um, what you should do, like how you should act at the show, things to expect, and then more specifically to Brandon's comment, how to manage the software platform. Um, so we'll go through kind of step by step. We'll have a guide for everyone. It is, it's very user friendly. Um, everyone that had experienced it last year, you know, uh, in 2022 had great feedback. And even the couple things that, um, may have not been as seamless, we figured out for 2024. So, um, excited to launch that and, uh, very user-friendly. Okay. Next one, um, 
If we fall into multiple zones, how is it determined which zone our KS will be in? It's it's really up to the company. Um, we have a couple companies that are in multiple zones, but if you're really just picking one zone, um, just pick the one that you might fall into the most or that you may be speaking to um, at this specific show the most. Uh, but then I fall back and say, it's not that like uh, in enclosed of a feeling to think that like if I'm an ingredient company, but also a flavor company and I'm in the flavor zone, they're not going to think I'm an ingredient company. Um, you'll be able to por portray yourself as both. Um, so it's not as confining as you'd think. Um, so just pick yeah, the boundary. It, it's it's a way to organize people, but I would say the boundaries yeah. are kind of porous, right? It's not like you're like isolated in a silo of of a particular type of company. But as as Abby said, sometimes people get multiple kiosks to sort of accomplish that goal of being present in both locations. But either is a suitable approach. For sure. Um, I a question that I remembered from yesterday. As I'll give it another minute to see if anyone else bring in any other questions, but. Something to also reinforce that was asked yesterday was, again, any timelines to think about um, over the next few months and the number one um, being to get in as a supplier before the software platform launches. And um, that, again, is kind of that mid-January date. Uh, so if you're thinking of coming in, um, thinking of participating, try to get in before that date and that'll get you set up on the platform. And as soon as the platform's launched, You'll then have access to that initial wave of all the attendees that are in. You'll have that first come, first serve um, experience as opposed to if you wait till February, March, then um, some of the schedules get um, filled up, which also that uh, mid-January, which is specifically January 17th, is the early bird deadline in terms of actual registration. So you'll save on that as well if you register your individual personnel before then. Um, so get all of them in by that date and you'll save a little bit of money. Awesome. We got them all. So Brandon, any, any final thoughts? I think we covered a bit. Just, and um, not, yeah, mm -hmm. I, a lot of talking by me, but um, I, you know, I've said it many times, but uh, I think I, I do appreciate Abby, you highlighting a couple of those dates in January between the early bird date ending or the early bird reg date kind of closing and this the meeting platform opening up that mid-january period really is sort of a critical uh time horizon so i would if you haven't already registered i would sort of be thinking with that sort of time horizon in mind and obviously i know the holidays are coming up um so it's it'll be here before we know it uh, but it's the other thing is you know last let we did this in 22 the event was kind of in late march now we've got easter falls a different time of year so we've kind of we're now in like mid-april so we've got a little more breathing room but not necessarily with respect to that kind of January period, because between saving money on your registration and being ready to populate that meeting platform, uh, it would be great to sort of be ready to roll the minute all that stuff opens up. Awesome. And again, you can reach out to myself directly for anything supplier suite related. Um, Brandon as well, my colleague David Walsh uh, in, in regards to sponsorship. Uh, the overall show, and then Christina as well for registration and hotel reservations. We're all here to help um, with all your answers. So do reach out uh, whenever needed. And thanks again for joining. We will see you in Dallas. Thanks again. Bye, everyone.